So changing the brake fluid in your vehicle is one of those kind of controversial internet topics. Uh, I tend to do it every couple of years, but uh, I know people that never change it the whole life of the vehicle. And they seem to do just fine. But uh, for me, I like to change out that dirty you know, brake fluid every once in a while. And that's what we're going to do today. So my chosen method for doing a brake flush is to do power bleeding. And this is a Motive Products power bleeder. I've had this for quite a few years and this is actually my second one. And they come with uh, different adapters for different master cylinder reservoirs. This one's for a late, for late model uh, Chrysler and Dodge vehicles. And that just connects there in the middle of the hose. Highly recommend this. Uh, if you want to check it out, I'll throw a link down in the description. And of course, for this job, we need some new brake fluid. This is the DOT 3 variety because this is a DOT 3 system. DOT 4 is also interchangeable with DOT 3, but DOT 5 or 5.1 is silicone based, I believe, and that will damage a DOT 3 system. So, so if you happen to be doing this for the first time, just uh, make sure you get the right stuff for your vehicle. I also have here a disposable syringe and I will use this to uh, take out any of the dirty fluid out of the reservoir. I also use a line wrench which is a 10 and 11 millimeter size which works front and back on this vehicle. Uh, this really helps with uh, making it so you don't strip your bleeders on your calipers. So I've had that for a bunch of years too. Uh, and then we have the bleeder bottle and hook this up to your bleeders and catch the fluid. It also helps you to see it when the uh, clear fluid or the clean fluid is coming through to know that you've flushed that line. And then I just use some brake cleaner and some clean rags or towels to make sure everything's clean and tidy. You don't want to be dropping any of that brake fluid on your paint job. That'll eat the paint right away. All right, before we take this cap off, I'm just going to kind of wipe around it. Make sure that all this dust and stuff is off of the off of here so it's not getting in there. And you can tell this fluid is pretty old. It's been in there a while. And while I'm doing this, I'll show you this tester I have. This is a brake fluid tester, and it'll actually tell you if you need to replace it or not. Now usually I replace mine early enough that it's I never really have a lot of moisture in there and moisture gets into your brake fluid. It's hydroscopic, it actually attracts water. So this will just tell you how much moisture is actually in there. This one and it's kind of hard to tell shows you which flavor of fluid here so dot three four and five point one so it's selectable and then as long as this probe here is clean you can stick that in there and it'll actually give you a reading so this reads one yellow dot which means it's less than one percent uh, moisture contamination now it's been just about two years since I last flushed this. Um, you know, I wouldn't expect there to be a whole lot of moisture in there. And it's not the dirtiest fluid I've ever seen. But, uh, yeah, since, it, you know, if you change it often enough, you probably don't need to worry about the moisture content. But, you know, they have these. They're pretty inexpensive. And I think I got this on Amazon. I'll throw a link down there in the description and you can check it out. I'm going to start using the syringe to pull, start pulling fluid out of there. And I don't want to go too far, I just want to get down to close to the minimum amount of the minimum line.
And you can see here this fluid is kind of honey flavored. It's not the dirtiest I've seen, but it could use some replacing. That new fluid is pretty clear. And I forgot on this vehicle it actually has something in the reservoir there that makes it impossible to get this into the syringe down in there. So unfortunately on this one, I actually have to put the fluid through the system. Um, anyway, there's a min and a max mark on here. And normally I would just empty this down to close to the minimum. I don't want to really get below that. And then I fill it with fresh fluid. And I'm going to fill this up. And I'm going to fill it all the way, even past the max. And this is just how I do it. And I'm going to, I'll show you how I use this bleeder. And here, I actually don't fill this with fluid. They do recommend you do that, and then the fluid will flow through. However, I found good results with just uh, putting this in empty. And then go ahead and pump it up. And I pump this up to about 15 PSI. Now the reason I do this dry is because I have had a hose burst on me before. These hoses don't last forever, especially if you're like me and don't clean them up enough. And so I just found it's easier just to leave it empty. The reservoir is full. And I just have to keep an eye on that as I'm bleeding and uh, make sure it doesn't run past the minimum, but that's easy enough to do. Okay, so here is my rear caliper, and this is the bleeder. Yeah, let's see if I can get this rubber piece off. There we go. And I'm doing this with the wheels on because fortunately the truck's tall enough I can get under here and do them all. But you may need to, you know, take all your wheels off and do this. Fortunately, I don't have to. But we'll just hook our bottle up here. I believe the rear is a 10 millimeter. Okay. Nope, it's 11. Okay. There we go. Now I'll just open up this bleeder. And fluid should start to flow here. Now on mine, since I couldn't empty out the reservoir, Way down, of course, the first one's going to take the longest because we're getting the most dirty fluid out of the reservoir and the line. And then the, the rest should go a lot quicker than this. So I'll just have to keep an eye on, on the reservoir, keep filling it up, and uh, we'll get all the fluid through it. And you can see this fluid in here. Is pretty dirty, pretty nasty. Well, the batteries in my microphone went dead around this time, so we ended up with no sound. But what I'm explaining here is that I went and did the other three wheels exactly like I did the first one, running the fluid until it come, came out clean, and then uh, making sure to check the master cylinder reservoir from time to time just to make sure that didn't run empty. And then I'm showing the fluid that came out initially from each line. It's pretty dirty. And then the clean fluid that came out at the end of the flush on each line. Now at some point here I explained that 
And usually you do this from the longest line to the shortest line. That's most every vehicle. There are some exceptions to that. So in order to get the uh, longest line to the shortest line, you would go passenger rear, driver rear, passenger front, driver front. And that's based on the master cylinder being on the left-hand side of the vehicle or the driver's side of the vehicle. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.